They say podcasts are going to replace books. I don't know about that. But I do think TRS clips will assist your learning process. The atom bombs. Yes. So in the 1940s, the Americans were developing the atom bomb, the Manhattan Project. Uh, Nolan's making a movie on it. Is Christopher it? Nolan's making a movie on I the Manhattan see, I Project. See, I see. Right. Like about the whole moral dilemma of like throwing an atom bomb on human beings, etc. I see, I see. Right. So lots of nuclear physicists were involved in this. The best, the brightest minds that the Americans said, Enrico Fermi, J. Robert Oppenheimer and many other people. The theoretical work was done earlier by people like, uh, by people like Einstein and all that. Yeah, the basic uh, theoretical foundations of nuclear fission and all that. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to harvest nuclear fission, harvest it and create a chain reaction that will essentially liberate enormous amounts of energy, which is a nuclear bomb. Eventually, they were able to do that. The Trinity test in uh, in the desert somewhere in southern the southern part of the US. So there was this feeling that maybe the Germans are also pursuing a similar program, but it looks like they were not. So the Americans were racing towards the bomb. Then they were able to test the bomb in the Trinity test. Then they made two of these bombs. Fat man and uh, little boy or something like that. Mm. Yeah. So the Japanese were driven back in Asia. Eventually, uh, the, all they had was parts of Manchuria and the Japanese islands themselves. The Americans, after the Jap G Germans lost, after the Germans surrendered, the Americans launched an intense bombardment campaign on Japan. The Soviets took over the Sakhalin Peninsula, the Sakhalin uh, region. They took over the Kuril Islands. Uh, and uh, yeah, they came all the way to Hokkaido, which is northern, the northernmost island of Japan. Eventually, the Japanese refused to surrender despite months of intensive, intense bombardments by the US. Then the Americans tested two nuclear weapons on the Japanese population, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. And then the Japanese empire surrendered. There was this uh, ceremony on one of the warships. And ever since then, the Japanese have been under US occupation until today. Then, of course, there was the post-war period in which the Korean Peninsula was divided between the Soviets and the Americans, which now North Korea and South Korea. South Korea is also under permanent U.S. military occupation. Germany is now under permanent military occupation. So is Europe. Uh, so is uh, Italy. And places like the Netherlands, etc., even Turkey, have U.S. nuclear weapons on their soil as of today. So after the World War, what happened was that the Germany was again divided up. East Germany, West Germany. The Iron Curtain came up very rapidly. And that's the beginning of the Cold War. So the old power structure disappeared. Europe became weakened. The UK became a second-rate power. France became a second-rate power. In the 1950s, there was a Suez crisis that confirmed this. That now the top dog is the US. No longer, it's no longer the UK or the French. The French tried to play the last geopolitical gamble. They failed. The Americans arm twisted them into going back. And then essentially from that time onwards, the US has been the undisputed uh, ruler of the world. The UK, etc., are the vassal states of the US. And then the Cold War period begins. So that's where we can end this, I suppose. Mm. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out the entire episode and also check out this playlist that we've curated just for you.